Welcome to a sports betting podcast from pregame.com for the week of November 5th, 2009. I'm your host, RJ Bell. I'm joined by Marco D'Angelo, 30 years in the business, Vegas runner, genuine professional batter here in Las Vegas. This is segment five of six, big game preview, NFL Sunday night game, Dallas, Philadelphia. As usual, give us the line report, Vegas runner. All right, Philadelphia opened as a minus three point favorite at home with the over under 48. As of today, they're still minus three, but the Vigs plus 105 if you're gonna lay to three. So to take three points with Dallas, you gotta pay $1.25. So there's been a, uh, and again, that's what they, for newbies out there, is three is a key number. They're not as inclined, the books, to move off of that because they can get middled very easily. So they'll adjust the money line. So there's been Dallas money. Correct. And uh, total still 47 and a half. We haven't seen much movement at all. Okay, so we uh, actually do not have an official free pick in this game, but we got a lot of good opinions. Marco, what was the main handicapping factor that jumped out at you in this game? When I looked at the game, first thing that jumped out is obviously Cowboys are playing their best ball of the year right now, and this is a huge, huge revenge game for the Cowboys. This is the game that ended their season last year. Both teams went into that final week. The winner, it was simple, winner goes to the playoffs, the loser goes home. And not only did they lose the game, they got blown out 44-6. to six. And I'll go back to you to talk about that, but this actually, the one stat I had coming in this game were the Cowboy, I like trends which back up what I see with my eyes, is if I see that a team, is, you know, that a team is very good on the road, and you watch the games, for example, then you look at the stats and say, oh, they're 80% ATS on the road. It backs it up. And because a lot of times you can get the trends that the left-handed quarterback with red hair playing a night game. <laughs> yeah, when there's a seat 101A is yeah. taken, it's a lock. But I, I look at this Cowboy team, I think they're the type of team that will roll it, run it up against a bad team. And when they get cracked in the mouth, they back down. We've been talking about profiling these teams. The, in an earlier segment, we talked about Oklahoma uh, being the type of team that likes to be a bully. I look at Dallas as a similar team, and this stat backs that up. They're two and nine ATS against the NFC East. So Smash now, mouth. so it's it, the NFC East has been a, do, a dominant division for a few years now. These interdivisional games have been very important, and and they've literally won cover two of eleven times. And when you say Dallas is playing their best ball. Are they, or are they, and again, that Atlanta win, I'm going to have to kind of defer, but, you know, beating up on these bad teams and winning by either 10 points or 27, I'm not sure how different that is. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, yeah, I, yeah, Dallas is playing good lately, but Philly's playing their best ball of the season. This team could very easily be 6-1, and one, if not 7-0. and oh. The game they lost in New Orleans, they didn't have McNabb. And they lost the game to Oakland, which they definitely should have at least got out with the straight-up win. So uh, I think Philly's playing their best ball. And what backs that up, if you see what they have made no mistakes lately, they are plus 10 in turnovers the last four weeks. So this defense is getting all over the ball, and the offense is making absolutely no mistakes. And we know Romo's interception prone. So this team's really going to be ball hawking this week. I leaned Philly, and I was surprised that the line came out at three. I think that's based more on public perception. Well, and we talk about that. The Cowboy, if you want to, you know, when someone says to me, I meet them at a bar or something, they say, what's the one piece of advice to, to beat sports? I'm saying, you might not beat it, but if you bet against the most popular teams, you're probably going to break even. The Cowboys are a class. For them right now to say that Dallas is better than Philly, yeah. and with the juice, that's what they're saying, at minus three, and then with Philly being almost even money, I don't see anything objective to back that up. No, especially when this Dallas team scores a touchdown less in their road games. You know, that's a lot so when let me you're ask talking you a question. in the NFL. They're not scoring 50 points a game that's like an in college. That's an interesting stat, but when we're this, or the catch-22 with the NFL, and I'll kind of open it up to you guys, there's only 16 games a true, year. True, true. But for more than half the year, there's there's going to be less than eight games, you know? So, like, right now there's eight or seven. And, and so now with the road games, there might be two, three, three four. Sample size very small. Is 
the NFL, it's difficult to be a statistically driven handicapping league because there's not enough stats. In the NBA, you got 82 games. In baseball, you got 162. How much credence do you give to a handful of road games like that? You know, the only um, thing about the NFL, although the sample size is smaller, I do give stock in the stats because I think they're gonna, they bring their A game every Sunday. The stats I found are more accurate. You could depend on your numbers more when teams bring their A games. That's why I think I, I, I've done well in the past in playoffs, World Series, things like that, because I'm statistically driven handicapper, and for my numbers to be accurate, I need the team to bring so you, their so A So you game. like, and, and we'll jump to Marco, you like motivation to be a non-factor, and if teams are both trying extra hard, it becomes about the matchups and about the true power rankings. Of the exactly, team. exactly, and in the NFL, because it's a short season, you're pretty much getting their A game every day. Where in basketball, you can't tell me that all seven or eight guys are gonna bring their A game every single night. I don't disagree very often with Vegas Runner, but I couldn't disagree more on this statement. These teams don't bring their A game every week. It is a, only a 16 week schedule, but unlike any other sport, these guys get beat up week in, week out and they mail it in some weeks and that's why perfect example you talked about Philadelphia has two losses one of them is against Oakland if they bring their A game every week they ain't ever losing a game to Oakland yeah but when I'm saying in the NFL when that happens you have 16 games okay if they don't bring their A game 20 percent of the games with three games your statistics might right. not be so driven. I think you guys are both right is in the NBA, motivation is a huge factor. In 40 games, you might not get. 30 games, you might not get the right game. And, but I also agree with Marco is I think that a vast majority of the time, both teams are maxing out their effort. And, and a, a percentage of the time, and look at New Orleans against the Dolphins, clearly coming off that yeah. Giants game, you're going to have let down spots. Sure. And you're gonna, you look at Baltimore last week, how intense they were against Denver. You're going to have your super high spots and your super low spots. But the middle, motivationally, the middle is bigger in the NFL than any other sport. Percentage yeah. of, because of the number of games, yes. All right. One minute, Marco. What's a second factor in this game? This game for me, you know, last week, look at the Philadelphia blowout. If you break the game down further, and I was on Philly, so I was happy with the blowout. But they only right, outgained them. So this is them. probably a good spot. Is these guys? <laughs> <laughs> these guys um, had. Uh, they actually do another video called "Just with These Two: A View from Vegas." Is that the it's title? It's the Week in Vegas: A okay. Better's View. Ah, there it is. And they talk about Vegas, about sports betting. Anything. It's, it's just like having lunch with them, but you don't get to see Marco we eat. <laughs> but that actually, it could be almost like we a only got ten minutes on this. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like a breakfast with Blassie. I don't know if you guys ever saw Andy Kaufman. <laughs> With Fred Blassie, the pro wrestler, YouTube that that's classy, classic. Freddie Blassie. Yeah, they just man. sit around talking. That's Pencil what we got to get. We got to get the camera down to the wisest deli. But the fact of the matter is, is these guys talked about four minutes. You said about Marco lost his game of the year last week, and uh, he was twenty four and five. Yeah. Lifetime before it, it was painful. I didn't. He, he was. Uh, he had. Uh, what's that called when you don't have it? You're out of communication range <laughs> yeah. for like 36 <laughs> hours after. He takes it seriously. But the fact is, we talk about the winners and the losers. But check that video out if you want. And and Marco explains how he thinks about losing these big games. We really do have about 20 seconds. Yeah. I'm sorry, make Philadelphia point. only outgained the Giants last week by 35 yards, a 40 to 17 score, and it was only a 35 yard difference in that so game. So you're questioning if the if Philly really is. We got that loss against Oakland, and now you're questioning how well Philly yeah. is playing. Yeah. Uh, so I, my tendency here, I, I would lean. My first instinct is lean to Dallas here in this game. Also, right. start paying attention to the weather now as we get to more winter. All right, so no official free pick on this. We have three official ones in the different videos. Okay, good stuff. Next up, segment six of six, Monday Night Football, and Mr. Pittsburgh will be talking about the Steelers. And remember, you can get all of our videos at pregame.tv, or if you want to download and listen, just go to iTunes and search for pregame.com.